goes through your mind? I want to be very clear to any children that are listening to this right now that we're not talking about bullying as a child because there's never an excuse for that and bullying as kids is not okay. So with that disclaimer, I'm going to make some comments now knowing that they're not intended for children in that regard. Um, this is a tough one. There is, as Bart knows, a culture in a locker room. There is a give and a take. There is a camaraderie um, uh, without sort of getting into hormones associated with it. There's a lot of that. I can't believe I just said hormones on, well, on TV. Yeah, I think we know what you mean. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Cable. Yeah, I mean, we're on <laughs> cable, but I'm getting that kind of hormones now. Uh, but there is a line, man. Right. There is a line. And what occurred to me upon hearing this story initially, and my mind hasn't changed, is this is why you need leaders in your locker room. This is why you need in your locker room men who understand lines that can't be crossed. It's almost like your leaders are in charge of the gas pedal and the brake pedal and they know if things go too far it's a little time to tap the brakes they know when it's okay to be full speed ahead on the gas pedal um, locker rooms analogy, are a delicate delicate environment and I do think also we need to be very very sure not to quickly label something we live in a society we would want to rush to put a label on everything the label that initially came out here and I don't know who initially put the label on it was bullying we don't know if this was bullying or not. We're not in that locker room. We're not on that sideline. We have to understand that a locker room is not a delicate place for delicate flowers, but there is a line, and that's what you need your team leaders to, to address. You lived it, Bart. Yeah, but, exactly. remember, but remember, remember kids, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> it's a place for big boys, man. And of course, rule number four in our playbook is have skin like an armadillo. <laughs> you gotta be able to give it and you gotta be able to take it. It's like being around a bunch of your big brothers. If you're a younger player, I want my donuts, I want my food, mm -hmm. I want my, you getting to the back of the line, you're getting taped last. It's just a packing order. Can and I ask if you you're a not question? the alpha male. I hear you. Can I ask you a question mm -hmm. about that? Understood, agreed, there are those rules. You do want a skin. Heck, in the front office, you want a skin like an armadillo. Yeah. My question is, if you as a leader in your locker room see that someone is not handling this well, do you do something? Well, okay, if you see somebody's had enough, you kind of step back and That's say, hey, man, he, he's took a little bit. But, I mean, if, if we're talking about one incident, an uh, incident that kind of, you know, he's been having a tough year, and I've been calling him weirder on the air because that's his nickname and kind of making fun of him. So, I mean, I mean all the criticisms that he's taking and, 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 you know, Brian McKinney coming in, sometimes that's a lot of emotion to take from a young player, and, and you kind of crash. I think it's good for him to get away, reboot, and figure out, you know, you know, is this worth him coming back? And, and I you know. think ultimately you and I are agreeing because what we're both saying is maybe, it'll, maybe a leader yeah. at some point just steps in and says, you know yeah. what, back off just a minute. Go easy on him today. Yeah. Well, here's 